Come on, dude. I met this chick on Facebook dating, right? Uh-huh. And she, I one of my pictures on the fucking Facebook dating is me and the two addicts in one. Yeah. <laughs> and she goes, so you're on a podcast? I say, yeah. Uh, I take it to two addicts in one. And she, uh, she goes, yeah. She goes, so which one are you? Uh, then we get to talking. She goes, oh. She goes, I was definitely right. You aren't a moron. Uh, and then she goes, so which episode should I watch? I'm like, just watch any of them. They're all good. She picked the porn one. <laughs> <laughs> she, she goes, I learned a lot about you in 53 tabs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Well, we don't hide anything on our podcast. Yeah, there with people. That is always the question, though. Which one are you? When someone finds yeah. two addicts in the morning, who are you? Yeah. Well, I'm well, one of the you addicts. Gotta... <laughs> I'm definitely one of the addicts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, season two. two. Somehow, these fucking addicts and a moron fucking figured out a way to make 12 of these things and make it to 13. Mm. And um, a lot of that is just due to the response that we're getting from everybody out there. And mm. I, I'm pretty sure that even if there was just one fucking person watching and we had one subscriber we'd probably be sitting up here talking about pulling skin off of wieners with face scrub and putting things in people's buttholes to hide it from the cops and fucking stealing a bunch of glue <laughs> between Lafayette, Louisiana and fucking Dude, that's commitment that brother that is as that is, commitment. that is committed as it gets, but we have made it to season number two. Thank you folks for watching, subscribing, hitting the notification bell. We appreciate it, so much. and um, we have some some things coming up this season. Uh, big things. Where uh, mm-hmm. I want to take a moment to, I, I took a, a moment to do this early in an earlier podcast of ours, but we're gonna have some females on here to keep us a little bit more in check mm-hmm. and get that perspective. Because the one thing that you need to know about me and Mike is. Any conversation, no matter how serious it gets or how serious it is, we're gonna start talking about the the toilet and the gutter. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna start we're gonna start talking about taking shits and jerking off, and like it's that's just where it's gonna go. So we need that to um, to start. Um, Maybe on those episodes we won't. Yeah, yeah. We're, not. Well, that's we're, what I mean. Yeah, we're gonna we're, pull we're, that back and pull that back. Get we're a gonna little, pull out for the first get, time ever. <laughs> but on uh, bumps. So season number two uh, introductions in the middle. Joey the moron. To the left, Jay Klein. To the right, Mike Stewboy, Addict Meth GHB. You represent the moron perfect. Thank you. Like I was my mom's so thinking, proud of that. I was thinking just now, like I'm so glad that I don't have to speak first because I, I'm like I would just be like burr burr burr. I want to get back know. to that, but we have a tradition yes. uh, that we need to kick this off with. So, uh, Jay Klein, that's right. Like we always do, let us get present, let us get centered, and most importantly, let us think about the addict out there that's still suffering right now. Um, the friends and family members that are suffering and struggling with them. Someone in recovery currently going through it right now. And the ones that unfortunately could not make it back with us. Let us take a moment of silence. Thank you. I want to touch on that because I thought about something since the last episode about you speaking first or, you know, going, going into that. Um, I have been laughing uncontrollably when watching the Walmart uh, incident. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, I like, it's running through my head. <laughs> kind of. I, I see it like a cartoon and it's Mike, 250 pounds of you. With ball sacks under your eyes, dark circles, you know, out of recovery, fucking standing there with uh, trying to to essentially steal goods and services from a place. Mm -hmm. And a lady approaches him and all you, uh, 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 like a fucking special (laughs) needs kid. 
I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> but I don't know what's going on right now. And then just fucking runs out. <laughs> that po- that lady was probably just like, oh, that poor fella. Yeah. You know, he just... Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, obviously, you, you probably do have a little bit of an issue with... Um, speech. With speech. Yeah. Or, you know, under pressure. It works out well. I uh, think you actually speak really well on here. No, I appreciate dude. that. No, I think we all do. So... Um, Yesterday, this is a funny story real quick. I took Kalen to go watch Garfield, right? Okay. So if you know anything about me, when I go watch cartoons, I fall asleep every fucking time. Me too. And um, so Kalen's watching Garfield, and I'm fucking sleeping. And uh, then all of a sudden, I'm getting woke up by the manager for the fucking theater. He's like, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Kalen's like, dad, dad. He's like, sir, sir. He said, hey, I don't mean to startle you. I know you're pretty, you're pretty buff size. I didn't want to wake you up. I was trying to get your daughter to. But you're snoring, and people were complaining. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm like, bro, I was kind of embarrassed for a It takes a lot to make me embarrassed. <laughs> hey, this is during the movie? This is during the movie, yeah. Oh, like I'm, I'm thinking they're waking me up to pay the tab. No, nah, the tab hasn't came out yet. <laughs> and uh, he's like, sir, sir, look, I don't. Uh, some people are complaining. He said, look, I get it. I'll fall asleep, too. And I'm thinking, one, this is kind of embarrassing. Two, I'm thinking, which one of you motherfuckers ratted on me for sleeping? <laughs> right. Like, there's nobody. Like, we, I always pick the areas where there's not anybody. So it had to be somebody behind us. And I'm like, I'm thinking, which fucking Karen or which, what's the guy's name? The Karens? Chad? Uh, Chad, fuck oh, it. Yeah. Which one of you Kyle? Karens or Chad's fucking ratted on me for sleeping? Tanner. Son of a bitch. This is the only, time, this is the only time I get to sleep when my daughter's with me. I got to yeah. be a dad the whole time. Let me fucking sleep during Garfield. Yeah. Well, you just got to yeah. get that snoring in And then when yeah, we yeah, walked out, the same Get manager, a CPAP or something yeah. next time. Look, when we walk out, we tried to go the opposite way so I don't run into this manager again. And we ran into him again. He's like, sir, I apologize for waking you up. I didn't mean to startle you. I said, you didn't startle me, bro. I was just fucking kind of embarrassed. Yeah. And he's like, well, you, you know, you're a pretty buff dude. And I was trying to get your daughter to wake you up because I didn't want to fuck with you. But she couldn't wake you up. She's like, nah, he's not waking up. He's sleeping. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was great. Yeah. So we're not going back to that theater fucking well, ever. Yeah. Where was that? Movie house? No. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Uh, the closest one to my house. Yeah. Like, a rock skip and a throw away. Oh, yeah. man. So we'll we'll be back there next week. Destiny hates going to watch movies with me because I'm so fucking loud. Yeah, I ask questions and she's like, "Stop, stop, stop!" I'm like, "Bro, there's nobody else in here. Like, I paid good money for this seat. I'm going to talk loud." (laughs) And then maybe you know I might try to fondle her here and there. Uh, Yeah, she doesn't like that. Yeah, we're in the movies. It's dark. Yeah, touch me. (laughs) Oh my god, bro! Come on, touch me, rub me, (laughs) rub. Why do you think we're got in the backseat? I'm just Take kidding. It. We really don't do that. Uh, yeah. If you're wondering why the floors are always sticky <laughs> in that particular area, you wonder why it's not the soda. <laughs> it's not the soda. Yeah. <laughs> why won't this recline? <laughs> you know, they say your sex drive dies with age. Not this fucking. Yeah. Time. <laughs> Bro, well, I'm worse than what I was when I was 20. Congratulations. Thank you. Probably That's all that great. pre-workout you're on. It could be. Yeah. I might take more today. <laughs> Atta boy. Yeah. So anyway, keep so coming back. Story. All right. Well, um, you know, season two, episode one of that. Um, something got brought up to me by uh, by a young lady, and uh, she's one of the biggest fans of the podcast. She's uh, kind of an OG. She actually put it in a comment to the last one but it it was interesting to me because she was like watching you guys even through all the silliness which is great and it helps take a little bit of that pressure off but it got her to re like the way she put it was it really is making me reevaluate my partying days and if i was an addict and she was like i never really paid for anything because I hung out with people who just had Mm -hmm. stuff. I never really, um, had to go beg, borrow or steal to get it. Um, but she was like, because of that back then it was like, uh, that defended what she was doing. Like, Oh, everything's fine. I'm not spending money on it. I'm not, you know, it's, it's fine. Right. But, um, I guess her, retrospect was that you know i i think i was probably Mm. an addict and i was able to get myself out of it 
um, on my own. Mm-hmm. Do you do you guys know people who have gotten out of this thing without the rehabs, without the uh, detoxes, without the meetings? Um, do you, do you know people like that? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, twelve uh, step program that I work is not the only way. And is not the only recovery solution, mm-hmm. uh, though I found it's the most, uh, it's the highest success rate, and there's more to it than just recovery. It's about growing and um, developing and learning how to live in principle, right? And healing. But uh, yeah, I mean, for me, the biggest thing was before I even worked a step, I I had a complete mind shift change. And some people, some people can just let it go. I mean, I, some mm-hmm. people are able to uh, come to quicker than others. Yeah. Um, everyone responds, I think, a little, could respond a little differently to whatever situations they are. Some people just like, you know, I've had enough or, you know, or maybe it was just a phase. I don't, you know, I, I don't know exactly what the... Uh, Everybody's probably different. Everyone's a little yeah. different in... Um, but yeah, I, I know people that were full blown addicts, and they just said, "I'm done." Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever, whatever they reached to conclude that, that that made them done, whatever was their determining factor and why they don't uh, use anymore. By all means, whatever you want to do. Uh, mm-hmm. But like I said, I, I, I prefer working the twelve steps because, like I said, it's 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 uh, it's more about uh, fixing what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, living in principle and, you know, keeping yourself in check. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, however you choose to recover is how you choose to recover. I think a big thing is, though, is like uh, the situations, the environments and the means and ways of using and how to use can sometimes be masqueraded by uh, the actual situation. OK, so I wasn't. uh you know, flying a sign on the highway or not the highway of the intersection. I wasn't, you know, robbing department stores. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't sucking dick for Coke. I wasn't, yeah. you know, doing yeah. sexual favors for, yeah. uh, for substances. Uh, yeah. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I, w- I was an upstanding addict. Yeah. You know, there, there is some upstanding addicts. I've met them. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, you're a nice addict, dude. Yeah. You know, you don't lie. You don't steal. You just, Use large amounts of drugs and your life's unmanageable. That's that's the main thing. Uh, it's not necessarily about how much or how often necessarily. It's about what happens when you use, and is your life unmanageable. That that that's that's the ultimate barometer for, I think, determining uh, if you have a problem or not. I think there's a lot of people out there that, you know, don't know that they're an addict. Or they don't want to admit that they are. I think that's what it is, yeah. Um, you know, like, there's people that I know that if someone was going to ask me, and, and look, I'm not, I'm not a, ju- I don't judge anybody. I could, you know, if you can use and get away with it, if that makes you feel better, I personally can't do it. Uh, I know what happens if I start using uh, uh, this whole, fu- I will tear this whole fucking thing down. I will lose everything that I have that I've gotten back from recovery. But there's people out there that if you were to ask me, do you think that person has a problem? I would say yes. And that person, there's people that we work with Mm -hmm. that I would say, yes, that person has a problem. But that's not for me to judge. That's not for me to go to them and say, hey, you have a problem, you know? Right. Um, But there are people that can go without rehab. Uh, My girlfriend went without rehab. She just went sober living and decided she wanted to stop. Well, Now, she still goes to a program. She still works with a sponsor, a very good sponsor, and she still goes through the steps. Uh, I think what Jay Klein said is, you you know, some people come to that determination that I'm fucking tired of losing everything or I'm tired of getting my ass whipped. Uh, my sponsor always says, I got a really good sponsor now. Shout out, John. He said, um, you know, sometimes people need to go back out there and get their ass kicked some more before they're ready. And that's okay. You know, that's what, sometimes that's what we got to do. I, I got my ass kicked for 10 years and I didn't want to lose anything anymore. I didn't want to disappoint anybody anymore. And that's what, 
you know, it's, um, he always says, it's shocking that I went so long without relapsing because I didn't work the steps. Mm -hmm. But he also says that he thinks because I'm so honest about it as in this program, this podcast helps us. We're very vulnerable here. Yeah. And we'll, we'll tell you everything and anything about us. He said he thinks that really kept me from doing that because I don't. A lot of people keep that shit hidden in them. Mm -hmm. That's why the steps are so great because it brings that stuff out that you've been holding back on for so long. Maybe childhood trauma, um, abuse, sexual abuse, whatever. And when you go through the steps with somebody that you trust and somebody that will listen and somebody that's probably been through all of that before, Mm -hmm. then it brings all that stuff that keeps you from sanity and it also keeps you that will that will keep you going back to using whenever you're able to work it out and admit you know this or that and then move past it and forgive whoever or forgive yourself so but there are people that can do it you know some people don't i think some people aren't willing to admit that they have a problem um some people are and I, i would imagine it's a little embarrassing um shameful that better better word is what you just use it's very shameful to admit that you're an addict i mean essentially you're you're admitting defeat in that you don't have control on something Mm -hmm. and something is controlling you uh because nobody likes to be out of control right and no one wants to admit that something is wrong with them Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's tough so i the the you know, I know you said your girlfriend, but she still went to sober living. Yeah. Right? Like, so I would almost consider that a form of treatment. Would you? Uh, uh, to it, yeah. To, well, well, you're around a community. Yeah. I think that's sober important. living is for, uh, yeah, d- getting involved in community, develop, being around like minded people. Uh, it's about taking advantage of the growth, and it's about structure is the main thing. Right, uh, falling in line with uh, a structured environment uh, to get you back into a routine a of routine, doing yeah. normal things, healthy things. Um, like I said, being a part of community that's big for me. That's what I push a lot. Community, unity, and fellowship, I think, are uh, pillars of recovery, um, and so important. Like ALR Fest, like how yeah. be- how beautiful was that? Yeah, and, dude, that was great. Um, you know, like things like that. To get you outside of just, because uh, like like in addiction, I'm, we're only doing I'm only doing a couple things, and they all involve one thing, mm-hmm. you know. Like I used to have so many like preconceived uh, prejudgments and preconceived ideas of certain activities. Like like uh, I go to a I go to a particular meeting on Friday nights, and afterwards we all go fellowship as a group, and sometimes we go bowling. Now, if you would have asked me, in a di- do I want to go? No, I don't want to go bullying. That, that that shit is, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't yeah. want to do that. Like, mm-hmm. that's whack. That's right. That's boring. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to go hiking. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, canoeing. Canoeing. I don't want to <laughs> go paddle boarding. I don't want to do any of that. That's lame. Yeah. That's what lameos do. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know what's lame? <laughs> Walking around Rumberg in 110 degree temperatures because you got you're trying to find money and you're walking through the HEB parking lot asking mm-hmm. people, hey, do you have five dollars because I need to get a bus pass when I don't need a bus pass? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. lame. Yeah, uh, it's it's crazy how many uh, doors I I shut mentally in my mind because of those preconceived ideas. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I go bowling every other Friday, and it's the funnest thing. Yeah, in the world. dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun. Like. Uh, Life is meant to be enjoyed. There's so many activities that that it's about experience, mm-hmm. you know. Just and that that's how you find. Uh, I think um, uh, that's how you keep life fresh is doing new things and you know exploring. We're meant to explore. We're meant to try new things. We're meant to learn. We're meant to grow. Uh, shutting yourself off from any anything is like, you know, it's it's you just that's not you're letting yourself down like from from an experience. You know, someone in recovery asked me to go kayaking every weekend. All right. Someone that watches this podcast. And I'm always like, fuck no. Like, that does not sound fun to me. And um, now that you mention it, I think I'm going to go kayaking with him next time he asks. Try it. And I'm probably going to fucking hate it. 
or I think that I'm going to hate it, but maybe it's going to be fun. I don't know. Well, it's like, it just doesn't sound fun to me. Uh, like I don't want to go out there at seven in the morning in the heat fucking paddling, but I'll try it. Fuck it. I, I, I went rollerblading with like destiny likes to go fucking roller skating. I fucking hate it. Yeah. But I know that, Sometimes being in a relationship, you got to do things that you don't fucking want to do for the right. other person because right. that's what they like doing. And uh, I actually learned that in a movie before. Hey, Can man. you uh, put your mic on rollerblades? No. Yeah. No, I suck. <laughs> no. Bro, I, I eat shit. And when I eat shit, look, I'm a big dude. Yeah. And when I land, it sounds like fucking <laughs> someone just dropped weight. And it sucks and it's embarrassing. And uh, last time we went, I ate shit twice right in front of like this group of probably some college girls or whatever yeah and i was like <laughs> perfect perfect time and like bam and then like it was so bad they were like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and then i got up real quick and ate it again and i was like fuck this i'm taking these off i'm done but uh i'm gonna go kayaking next time yeah, yeah so like I, even me you know I, I i tell a story this just recently happened but i bought my daughter concert tickets mm -hmm. for christmas and it was here very recent it was that's when the concert was and i bought her those tickets being like okay you're 22 years old you're probably gonna want to take a friend mm -hmm. like right why don't you go to this concert with you and not me mm -hmm. you know you know what i mean like somebody else <laughs> yeah, yeah. like you know what i mean and this was her favorite band it is her favorite band and mm -hmm. She wanted to take me. She wanted me to see what she was into, right? And it's kind of the kayaking thing. I was like, all right, let's let's go. I, we'll do it. And then, yeah. the, you know, the day came. And it's like going to a concert at the Moody Center is, it's exhausting. <laughs> like getting downtown, parking, Fucking getting in the venue, getting out of the venue, and it's not even a band that I'm like into, yeah. right? And we got in there, and I had the best fucking time. What like band this was band, it? it was Greta Van Fleet. Hmm. Nice. And uh, this band fucking kicked ass. Really? Like, yeah. And I was like, I was blown away. I, I was like, I was so fucking like, I was happy at the end of it that I did sure. it. You mm -hmm. know, and. I, it made me think about other times like that where I have done things at the beginning where I was like, fuck, I don't really want to mm -hmm. go do this. And then you do it. And then you're like, that was fucking. Awesome. Yeah, this was great. This yeah. was a fucking great time. And you, I, I don't know if it's that it's just a fun thing to do mm -hmm. or if that you set the bar so low for the good time <laughs> that you're going to have. That, Put your expectations. Yeah, the, all the way expectations at the are just at the at the lowest of Dog low, shit right? Low. And then you do it, and it's like, well, yeah, anything's gonna beat that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, anything's gonna beat what I just put mm -hmm. out there. You know, so, um, so I think that's a a fair thing to say is like, you know, taking that jump, yeah, to or that leap, you know, into what you would consider not to be fun or lame or whatever because i bet even after you go rollerblading and eat shit it's like you're glad you did it afterwards she had fun caitlin had fun so yeah so i had i had fun yeah so you know that's and you know like i think also like you know just being open-minded and uh an openness of mm -hmm. you know trying having no things. expectations yeah. and just trying new things and also i think there's a lot of lessons that can be learned from trying certain new things mm -hmm. like falling on your face there's got to be a dose of humility or like you know served right there right. Yep. you know and it's also like a, a, a sim it's kind of symbolic for life you know you you, you fall down but yeah. you get back up and you, and you try it again and you keep going and then you learn and then it's like i don't know some for some sometimes like some people will will fail at something and that was, no, I want to. I want to master this now. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, yeah. like yeah, dude. Nah, That's like I, like I my the first time I went bowling, dude, mm -hmm. I bowled a forty three. Yeah, uh, and I'm like, dude, this ain't gonna happen again. Yeah. Now you get me out there, I, I'm liable to play for <laughs> yeah. the fucking PBA, 40, dude. Yeah. Put me on, yeah, forty three. Now, yeah. hey, now I'm Put about the to be bumpers up for that guy. <laughs> I don't want no bumpers. Y'all gonna see me fail. Yeah. That's awesome. And then come back two weeks later, and you know, we yeah. gonna, we gonna get some turkeys on the board. You know, when I, when I was in rehab, they used to take us rock climbing. 
in the the place in Austin, like Austin Boulder Project. Yeah. And uh, I was fucking out of shape. You know, I yeah, weighed oh, 250. Yeah. yeah. And I was, I was out of shape. And whenever we would go there, it sucked so bad because I was like, dude, I, like they have the levels of climbing uh-huh. and I could only do the first level. Yeah. And, but that competitive <laughs> spirit yeah. comes out yeah. to where, you know, we would go every other week and the, or we would go once a week sometimes. And then next week I was, dude, I'll go climbing now. If someone says, Hey, let's go climbing. I mean, I went and bought shoes and everything to climbing or for climbing because now I could do like the level five out of 10. Mm-hmm. And I sit there and watch some of these people that do sixes and sevens and eights and nines and tens. It's like, fuck. But like, it's something that I would have never tried unless I was in rehab. Right. And now if someone says, Hey, you want to go rock climbing? I'm like, sure. Just like golf. I used to tell people at, at work, um, you're not a man. I can't say the word that I really want to say. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. not a man. If yeah. you go golfing, like you're not an athlete golfing. Bro, if I can go golfing after this podcast today, I will. Yeah. I mean, it's very fun. I asked Chase if he wants to go golfing today just because I enjoy it. And yeah, you we know, should all go golfing together. Dude, yeah. I'm down. I mean, I'll do it for you guys, yeah. but I fucking hate golf, dude. That's okay. Like, oh, you gotta, I, see, you got to go out there with a different mindset yeah, of what but golf he, is. Here's the deal. Is Have like, you ever golfed before? Yeah. I've fucking been golfing. So here's my problem with golf, mm-hmm. all right? Like, I suck at it. Okay. Right? Not a problem. I'm okay with sucking at something and trying it mm-hmm. again. Rock climbing seems like a pretty short window. Like you're done in an hour or whatever. Yeah. Golf is an all Four day hours. fucking event mm-hmm. to do something outside all day that I fucking suck at. Yeah. Like something about that in my mind just is like, uh, well, you, you know, can always cash out after nine holes, make it two hours. What? But I, I, you could always like go to Top Golf. Yeah. And just whack That's not the, the same. Sh- you whack the shit out of golf balls for an hour and and call it a day. See yeah, that, there's something that, about when you're on a golf course. Like at Top Golf, you can hit you can hit off the tee every time, right? And you can hit good shots because it's on turf. Something about when you're on a golf course and you just hit a good shot, it's like, dude, it's it's the highest that I've been since doing meth. I mean, that's that's the easiest way. It's I've never been higher from any shot of uh, any anything that I've ever smoked. Rather than hitting a good shot, there's just something about it. Like you can have the horrible game and then just hit one shot. And it's like fuck. That's why I'm here. Like yeah. I can actually do this. Yeah. Like that was a fucking. That's a shot of professional hits. I know I might only do it once every 18 holes, but there's something about it. And you know what's cool about those different activities is in recovery you learn that you don't have to get fucked up to go do them. Right. That's the crazy thing. Like you know I can go to a club and not drink. Yeah, I can go golfing and not drink. People can drink around me. A lot of people that I go with sometimes will smoke. Yeah, and they always say, "Hey, is this going to bother you?" Nah, knock yourself out. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, we'll go. We'll all go, and you yeah. can get you yourself a little uh, fucking. Yeah. We'll buy hard, you shots. You, you know, he he wants a hard seltzer. That's yeah, what he, wants. <laughs> uh, he, he wants. You a know hard what? Seltzer. First Even of all, JV can drink. JV would drink. First of all. Those are delicious. Y'all can, t- right? y'all can cart together. Hard seltzers yeah. are delicious. <laughs> we'll be in a silver cart. Yeah. yeah. Dude, and we'll awesome. be in the fucked got, up cart. DW, yeah, I'll buddy. Fucking golf cart. <laughs> Sir, can you get your ID, please? <laughs> no wonder you ain't we'll golfing be... good. You're getting sloshed. Yeah. yeah. See, well, that's the beauty about golf is like it really, uh, golf is really the closest thing, closest game well, to life and mm-hmm. like uh, uh, practicing principles of life. In real time, in a in a in a sport, because you're you're utilizing all your senses, mm-hmm. the smell of the grass, the feel of the wind. Yeah, uh, you have to be really patient and present and centered when golfing. Mm. You know that's why I like Tiger Woods when he was going through his thing. That played a wow. role in his downward. I'm sure that played a large role in why he didn't do as good in some of those tournaments. Mm. Because of what was going on, and you're you're in your head, and you can't be in your head in golf. You have to be mm-hmm. totally present. Well, it's also one of those sports where it's all about you. There's not a team around you right. that you can depend on. Right. You know, it's it's going to be on you. If you hit a bad shot, it's on you. If you hit yeah. a good shot, it's on you. You know, there's not many sports where it's just yeah. You know, 
UFC, oh, baby. Yeah. Maybe you should jump into the UFC ring. And, Bro, if you my know. shoulders weren't <laughs> fucked up, I would have loved to. I think I would have fucking stomped some ass. <laughs> Probably. I think I would have stomped some ass. My shoulders are horrible. Uh, yeah, says every guy ever. Every while guy ever. While they're watching it on the fucking couch. Like, why you the know, fuck didn't you hit him with the left cross well, right there, Well, you know there, what's bro? crazy, though, is when you and I watch it, we actually know what's going on. Yeah. We know where I mean, someone's setting somebody up. Like, you watch it with some people, and they're like, oh, what the fuck? And I just like shut yeah, up. Yeah, it's shut a. Up. But we uh, actually, that's why we became friends. Yeah, we we met at a UFC fight. Yeah. And yeah, normally yeah. when I'm around people and they start talking <laughs> about fighting, because I used to do, I was a black belt in karate. Yeah. I was in kickboxing for a long time. And I was in jujitsu. So I know, now I'm not a fucking blue belt or anything like that. Stop. <laughs> but I know when someone's setting something up yeah. and what, what they're trying to do, I know the two and three steps ahead. And normally when I hear someone talk about fighting, I have to correct them because it drives me fucking crazy. But I didn't have to correct you because you knew what the fuck you were talking about. And I was like, oh, I can fuck with this dude. Yeah. I mean, I'm a novice. When and then afterwards, you guys show. went and tumbled on the mat together. Yeah, yeah. Exactly let's go roll right. together. Yeah. Let's go roll. <laughs> I don't have a gi. I don't have any shirt on. Yeah. Grope me. We're, we're not doing jujitsu. We're, we're just rolling around with each other. Roll put, around. Uh, put me an arm bar, Mike. Two guys in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> Two guys, one cage. Two guys, one bed. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that's right. what yo that's a different uh, yeah, form of the ultimate uh, yeah you want to whatever floats your boat you want to go roll in the cage well the funny thing him. about my cage is it's actually my bedroom <laughs> so you got to go in there all right and when the door shuts it's just like the cage door yeah. <sighs> it's game time yeah. <laughs> let's go he said he loved me yeah <laughs> hey and the crazy thing is it's probably gonna only gonna last three minutes too yeah, yeah. There you well, go. yeah. in and out painless <laughs> yo Helping everybody oh, out. Shit. Yeah. So, um, what else, guys? What else? You got uh, any other harrowing, silly stories? I and... will tell you um, a good story. I can't say any names. <laughs> you, uh, we, we're going to shout out the anonymous a lot. <laughs> well, I can't say a name just because. Um, so, one of our viewers had reached out to me, and you guys know this. Um, because she had started using again. Mm-hmm. And she texted me and um, said, I, I don't know why I'm comfortable telling you, but I started using again and I don't know what to do. Yeah. And I had to ask you guys, like, what do y'all think? I didn't tell y'all names. Y'all, y'all still don't know who it was, and I won't say the name. But... um. My first question was, well, do you want to be sober? Like, do you want to go back to life that you used to have? Because I, I knew her past. And then I asked you, if she wants to be sober, what's the next step? Because I really, you know, I don't, I don't know. And like I said, we don't, we don't know all the fucking answers. But I will tell you, when you're in a community with this, you can find the answers. Yeah. So you said, Does she, is she willing to go to treatment? And I asked her and she said, yeah. So I re- I sent out a text message to you and I sent it out to three other people that I know are in the program and pretty solid in the program. Um, Taryn was one. Um, I probably shouldn't say names. I probably shouldn't say names, but it, it was people that we trust. Go ahead and you edit might, that out. Might Joe. need to edit that out. Um, but I sent out a text to four different people, and within fucking minutes, there was all this response. Here's a number. Here's a number. I can make a phone call. Uh, one of our buddy, buddies said, hey, I've been working all night. I'm, I'm sleeping. Let me wake up and I'll get her in a place tonight if she's not in a place. I guarantee it. One of my homegirls that I met when I first got out of this program, the OG of the OG, she was like, give me her insurance and I'll fucking find her a place right now. It, can, it, it won't be where I'm at, but I'll find her somewhere. And we found her. They found her a place within three hours. And... um. And she was in, she, we, we had her off in rehab by that Tuesday. And this was over the weekend. But it was one of those things where this is someone that I've never spoken with before this podcast. And someone that I did not know anything about their past. They reached out to us through the podcast and told us. And it was like, you know what? I can't wait till we get to a level that we can fucking do this for anybody that reaches out. Yeah. So um, when you brought that 
to our attention. I could tell it was weighing on you, and I actually made it a topic of that podcast. Mm-hmm. Remember when I was, yeah, like, uh, and I figured we could take an opportunity to sort of work through that here you know Mm -hmm. and and an open forum without being too invasive to somebody's privacy or anything like that but i i i mean i think that look man i think this podcast helps us just as much as it does just through bouncing things off of each other yeah and how to help or, or how to go about helping people that are struggling or dealing with this and i know that was a big uh, you or it, you felt it was a big responsibility that mm-hmm. you had, and um, and I thought it was important to bring up. I'm glad you're bringing it up again because um, that is awesome. Yeah, that, you know, I, ta- um, I talked to this person all weekend, <laughs> and uh, we were at my mom's for Mother's Day, and my mom asked Destiny, she's like, "Who's he in there talking to?" And she told her. And she's like, that doesn't drive you crazy. And Destiny's like, no. And I'm like, even if that did, even if that did drive her crazy, I don't care. Because this is about helping someone else. It doesn't matter if it's same sex or not. Mm -hmm. It's not like me and this girl have something together. It was about helping someone when I was in a place where I was that helped me. Well, And, and paying it forward. Is and yes, it was very important to me that weekend. It, Somebody was asking you for help, though. Yes, 100%. you know what? What? N- no matter what that help was, right? Mm-hmm. We you didn't even know what help was being sought. Yeah, you know, and you you didn't know if she was open to getting being yeah. sober again. You, we, we didn't know any of. It. We kind of all had to sort of work through that mm-hmm. here together, and. um and I've had people reach out to me, you know, friends that have started watching the podcast and they're like, Hey, I've got a brother I've got, you, you know, really dealing with this. And I've not even told anybody mm-hmm. about this, yeah. but, um, it, it's pretty hair. It's a sobering, sobering experience to, mm-hmm. to have that kind of, there is a responsibility that yeah, comes absolutely. with that. There is. And uh, when I when I go to when I go to my meetings, uh, I make sure I go in there and I shake everyone's hand that I haven't seen mm-hmm. and introduce myself. That is my obligation and my responsibility to reach out to the newcomer. The newcomer is not supposed to come to me. I mean, they sure absolutely come to, me, but I should have already been there. Yeah, yeah. Right. I should already have been there. And I take that serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think that's that's the beauty of life. I think that's the beauty of this fellowship, this this podcast, um, this community, is that we we grow together. That's 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 what it's supposed to be. We're we, we're all we're all growing. Growing is you know is going to be a forever thing in mm-hmm. some type of way, and we're we're able to be a part of something, and also be a vehicle of something to where people can reach out for help and then we can then use our network. Uh, Yes. Got him. Or, or just reach out to vent, you know, cause that, that could have been that, that could have been all that was, you know, was, was, I mean, that person could have easily just said, no, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to go to treatment. I don't, you, you, and then we would have had a, Still, no less of a responsibility, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But like, because that person was opening up to you, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, it's it's always my thing to be uh, to be a, a safe space, right? You know, and that's uh, also why I'm so vulnerable. Why we're so vulnerable? Mm-hmm. Um, because we have to be. Yeah. Um, I don't think everyone uh, is as vulnerable as you and I. <laughs> no, <laughs> especially not to the masses. Like no, no. Um, no. Like, like I guess I've shared this plenty. I was like, there's things that I have do not, probably should not have shared on here, yeah. but I do it. Yeah, uh, especially with girls on dating apps. Yeah, girls what? on dating apps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go Off watch this podcast. Uh, You'll learn more yeah. about me. Yeah. <laughs> so what's up with the 53 tabs? Yeah. Look, uh, I was on math. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was an accident. Well, yeah, and to be fair, you know, we I, I know guys that are 
openly recovering and you, you know i've brought up you know hey we're gonna start bringing on guests i think you have a fucking awesome story mm-hmm. one guy we know we know him real well and he was like dude i don't want my shit to be out on the internet mm-hmm. like that like and yeah, that's I okay know, too and that's okay that's that okay is too. okay you know everybody recovers like, their own way uh, i recover out loud yeah uh something when and you know this when i first got out of rehab and i came back to work there was some people there that would tell me, hey, you can't be so open about your recovery or about your addiction. And I had to tell them, this is my story, and I'm going to, I'm going to say it out loud. Because there's other people here that can hear my story and that can hear how open I am to it and say, you know what, I have a problem too. Maybe I should reach out to that person. And I think that if you can't, uh, for me, if I can't joke about some of the shit that I did, right. Then, then who am I? You right. Know, that's just the that's the way that I am, and I'm very open about it. And yes, yeah, some of it is very vulnerable. Some of it's humiliating. Some of it is not stuff that I'm proud of. But hopefully, somebody that's listening can also say, and we say this all the time: "Damn, I did, They've done that too. I've done that too. They've done that too. Now it's not so shameful, and it's not, you know, something that." I'm so embarrassed about because other people do it too. Cause we all have the same story. I mean, we're all a bunch of broken crayons that yeah. still color, but we all have the same story in some way, shape or form. Just some people speak about it and some people hide it. Yeah. Well, it, it's like, but you say, you know, you've done things that you're not proud of and you speak about them openly. Both of you guys do. Mm-hmm. And That's because I've taken responsibility and accountability for what I've done. But then I also don't let the past define me because the way I live today is accordance with principles and not who I was. Yeah. And I also take the power back from the fucked up stories, from the miserable, shameful mm-hmm. acts, because I do live and walk in a different way. Mm-hmm. That I've taken that power back and I've turned that shame into a fucking testimony and a, and a story that, hey, yeah, you, you may have did that too. But you can also rewrite your story. You can, you can, you can come back. You can bounce back. And if someone wants to continue to uh, put that fucking belt on you from your past, you, you're not ever going to be able to change that. All you can do is be who you are today and live and walk in your truth. And when you live and walk in your truth, can't nobody say anything to you. Right. Uh, I guess the the point of that is is you guys being so vulnerable and talking about things that you are clearly not proud of from your past when you have when we have people reach out and we're able to help Mm -hmm. in any way whatever that is or we're able to be that safe space that in turn gives you guys a lot of pride right now you can be proud of that Mm -hmm. because you've opened up you've let it out you brought somebody else in, and that's something to be very proud of. And you guys need to be very proud of yourselves because we've, uh, you know, this podcast has already been a conduit to get somebody help that needed it. And mm-hmm. that's, uh, to my knowledge, I think that's one person, right? And we're on season two. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's pretty fucking incredible. If this thing didn't jump off and do what we're doing and you guys weren't saying what you're saying that would have never happened. Yeah. Right. 100%. And who knows what would have happened to that one person had you guys not got up here and we weren't wrapping all of this, um, really kind of fucked up past and fucked up things in a little bit of humor too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, making a little bit of levity yeah from it so you know i was at we were at church this morning and the preacher he said uh our preacher's been through everything too he's not a regular preacher yeah. this is one of the reasons i love going to this church but he said you know for so long he lived in the shoulda coulda wouldas mm-hmm. and there's a lot of past that he's wasn't proud of but if he's not able to share that with other people and let that be what it is, then he can't go after the new goals that God has in front of him. And that resonated a lot with me because if I didn't share what I've been through, then how can I really help the next person? You know what I mean? 
I mean, I'm a, I'm okay with telling you that I wasn't the greatest dad. I'm okay with telling you that I, you know, robbed people or I stole from people or I cheated on people or whatever. Am I proud of it? Fuck no. But I know that I need to speak about it because that's not who I am today. Mm-hmm. And I know that I need to speak about it because in order for me to go help the next person, the way that we're intended to help each other is I've got to be vulnerable and open to letting you know that, man, I did that fuck boy shit too. Right. You know, well, that's how you heal and grow. 100%. That's how you heal and grow. Well, uh, you know, the old hater back there is just giving us the finger. What the fuck is that? Yeah, he's <laughs> pound like, it. Uh, he's like pound wrap it up, mother. Yeah, like you're giving us. I'm, we're really not done weird. yet. We're yeah. giving you're giving us really weird hand signals back there right one? now, Joe. We got to talk about. Yeah, this we one. this was that a guy this and a girl? Is, or he's doing this. Two guys or what was that? Joe is doing this <laughs> behind the camera at us Dude, to tell us to stop. It? You're doing porn? Right <laughs> You've been watching porn? Uh, <laughs> Come on. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, well, we rubbed off on him. We, he's, At least we didn't rub one off on we're him. We're poisoning right. the well right now over there in, in our young oh, man, producer our young back producer. there, JV. I'm fucking killing him. Well, uh, this episode is coming to a close, guys. Thank you again so much for liking, subscribing. Keep the comments pouring in. Hit the notification bell. All of it. We're on all the formats. For this next season, we just started it. We're thinking about putting in, taking this out and these chairs out and putting in a sectional with a table. Put in the comments if you think that's a good idea or what you think that we should change in here. Is that kind? Yeah, cool. dude. Yeah, sure. Yeah, put, let, let, this is y'all's podcast too. So tell us what we should do. Should we add some shit on the walls? Should we put a bookshelf in here? Say what y'all think that we should add <laughs> yeah. in here. Well, yeah. I'm just saying, I'll put yeah. some David Goggins books up here. Let's go. All right. Well, Tom Brady books. reach out if you need help Please, to any one out. of us. Yeah, anybody. anybody. It's all about that out. network. It's definitely about that network. That's something else a preacher said today is uh, the enemy wants us to be by ourselves. When you have a community and you have people in your corner that you can reach out to, that's how you kill the enemy. Most definitely. So. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, episode one, season two. Two addicts and a moron. Peace. Two addicts, moron. Peace. Deuces.